To begin this analysis, I would like to take a moment to use a wise man saying very wise words. You can love someone deep inside your heart and there is nothing wrong with it. If a lot of people love each other, the world would be a better place to live. If a lot of people understood love, then the plot of Devilman Crybaby wouldn't have ended so tragically. <laughs> And I think a big contributor to that fact is misunderstanding. Fucking weeaboos go to Japan and be like, where, where, where are the subtitles? Without further ado, let's get right to it. The series is about love, and I'm confident in saying that because even the director said it in an interview. He said it before, in the end, it's about love. Is that what you meant? That's right. It's about what Ryo learns at the end. I set out to make the show with that in mind. Ryo meets Akira at a young age, and Akira is the only one who supports him. Deep in Ryo's heart, he feels that Akira is the only thing in the world worth keeping. But he doesn't realize it. We as humans can value others by more than if they're strong or weak, as would be logical. There's something more important than the rules of natural order. I want the viewer to see just how Ryo comes to that realization. Way back in college, I read this book called Socrates and Love, and it discussed the Greek perspectives on love and philosophy. We have eros, desire, sexual shit. No chance, no way, I won't say it, no, no. Storge, familial love. No, please, no. <laughs> Sanaya, hospitality. Be our dish. Philia, brotherly love. You've got a friend in me. Why's looking at me? Where? Ah! And we got agape, which is self-sacrificing, the highest form of love. I'm bad, and that's good. I will never be good, and that's not bad. There's no one I'd rather be than me. He also discussed Socratic love, but that's more his thing. And all of those are in Devilman Crybaby. We got Eros, we got Storge, we got Sinaya, we got Philia, we got Agape. And it's all <laughs> fucked up by misunderstanding. The misunderstandings I'm gonna talk about here are just a lead up to a bigger tragedy in the series. There are two pillars here. The first pillar being that of the friends and their misunderstanding with Miki or Miko. And the second pillar which is with Ryo himself. When we're first introduced to the rapper dudes, they're kinda, kinda dicks. But as the series progresses, you can see that underneath their rough exterior, they, they got a heart. And if you pay attention to the lyrics, they're very observant. You're thinking about shit. And one of their friends, Kukun, goes missing. And we, the audience, know what happened to him. He hung out with a bad bitch. What's sad about this is that our boy Kukun was like mustering up the courage to tell her how he feels and then he dies. And we get some shots that show us that yes, he is dead. And I think Miko keeps the glasses because they're like a reminder of that person. Maybe Kukun tried to save her, something happened, I don't know, but I don't think she killed him. But one of the guys do. Our get locked. This fuck. 
that causes the betrayal of the gang. The funny thing is, his motivation is very human. He wants to avenge his friend. Of course, he wouldn't ask her, hey, did you kill my friend? Any answer would be like suspicious, wouldn't it? So he just decides to kill this demon fuck. But was that really the correct thing to have done? He didn't even try to ask any other question. There wasn't even an attempt made. The failure to understand other people just makes this all sadder, doesn't it? Ryo loves Akira. Not in a you're my best bro way. In a I wanna smash that boy pussy way. And because of his love, he wants Akira to be safe. And we have that misunderstanding on his part. I've made Akira into a devil. And I might have just created the most powerful, ruthless, and brutal devil in this world. You're wrong though! If Ryo really understood Akira as a person, he would know that he wouldn't be so easily corrupted. He would know that he would have a pure heart that could subjugate the demon inside him. He, he doesn't get that from the start, which is not a good sign. You could say that Ryo is just getting used to getting people possessed by demons, so he doesn't know that you could subjugate the demon by pure heartedness, maybe. But it still betrays a fundamental misunderstanding of humanity. Motherfucker thinks that he could just isolate someone in a vacuum and ignore everyone else. People are social animals. They got relationships other than whatever you want to happen. So you gotta accommodate that. So because of his single-minded desire to kill all humanity, Ryo inadvertently causes the death of Akira's parents. The death of Akira's foster parents. The death of Akira's little bro. The death of Akira's friends. The death of Akira's bae. And then you got the gall to ask this shit. Akira, humans,人間は滅びる。お前は我々と生きるしかない。Akira,新しい世界を共に生きよう。そのためにお前を英雄アモンと合体させたのだ。ふざけるな! I would have been laughing if I wasn't crying so fucking hard! And he's all like, Oh, you're gonna regret this. I'm like, motherfucker, maybe you should have thought this shit through, huh? And put on some clothes, you're gonna demonetize my video! And another thing he doesn't understand is his ending monologue for the first episode is what he wants. He would have wanted if Akira was just a mindless demon following his orders. At least then he wouldn't have a problem with his feelings. Because he could just order the boy pussy to just stand around and look cute. He doesn't realize that demons can have feelings and emotions like what we see with Kaim and Selene. Wrong. That is over and over again. Wrong. He actually had Oh, we're not done though. This is just the second pillar. Now we're at So you got Ryo fucking up humanity, causing despair and strife worldwide, and you got Shorty here wanting to fuck up everyone for his dead friend. This culminates in the death of Mickey. Mickey, who was valiantly, but a bit naively, explaining to the internet that Devilman Akira isn't evil. And this paints a target on her back and it's a perfect storm of tragedy.
when Akira declares she has no more tears left to shed. Akira the crybaby, the person who struggled to save everyone, is done with your bullshit and just wants to fuck you up. And this just piles on the tragedy. You got a guy who wanted to redeem people. A guy that was fundamentally good. The lead up to her death has her and Miko rambling about the need to pass on the baton. When I first watched this, I was confused. Why would you care about passing on some baton? And then I realized it's symbolic. The baton is love. Miko talks to Miki. She passes on the love. Some fundamental human understanding. Isn't that a nice thing? Miki wants to pass something on to Akira, even just the smallest bit. And I think love was passed on, just not in the way anyone of us watching would have wanted. I would have wanted the ending where Akira and Miki ride off into the sunset, but we don't get that. Ryo does awaken to love at the end, and I'll get to that. Akira, I think, knows that deep down Ryo has some feelings. When he tells him he cried too when they were kids after the cat died, Ryo looks surprised just for the tiniest bit, and that's enough. Ryo thought, how did he know? So when he said this, I he was lying. In the final fight, we flashed to the relay race when they were kids, and despite his earlier declaration, Akira was still trying desperately to pass something on to Ryo. But nothing happens, he doesn't get it. Again. And again. And again. And do you see that, the red round thing with veins? It's him, right? I think it's his heart, too. He can't take it anymore. Finally, something happens. It's a confession, not only for his love for Akira, but also as to why he shut down his emotions. This is when the earring is important. A Wamu earlier on gave Mickey an earring, then Akira takes on the earring. And when Ryo's emotions finally awaken, the earring glistens. When Ryo finally has the baton, he's all alone. I say it's infinite tragedy because if you pay attention to the end credits, it mirrors a shot in the first episode. Anyone who knows their shit will go, here we go again. Devilman Crybaby's plot hinges on one fact, that Akira is incredibly dumb. Bro. Bro, your friend just stabbed people to summon a demon. Who, who, who wants to summon demons in the first place, huh? This is the part where you leave and never talk to him again. But I'd like to think of Devilman Crybaby as a fairy tale for the modern age. <laughs> no! So the moral of the story is to be careful of who you love or else he'll unleash the apocalypse, leaving only you to survive. 
No, that, that, I don't think that's the moral even. It's easy to talk of love, but real talk, I don't think love is enough. I've seen some shit. Not as graphic as what other people might have seen, but enough to confirm Wamu's observations. I think you should be understanding, that's a first step, but you gotta deal with people who are also willing to understand you. That's it for now guys, thanks for watching this review. Tell me how jaded I am in the comments below. If you like this shit, consider subscribing. Click that bell for notifications, unless you want me to become your dearest friend. And I'll let the demon... Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.